بسم الله الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على خير خلق الله نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وعلى آه The topic that we'll be discussing in this call it episode or uh, meeting is how Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم taught manners in terms of public relations and we've got to know the environment in which Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu lived. In Arab, Jahili, pre-Islamic environment. We cannot say that the people were not mannered at that time. But they never thought of the manners that Prophet, by Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Because his manners uh, astonished them. they were really astonished by how Prophet Muhammad وسلم, would treat others. Not only when he was an orphan and a young man, when he showed the greatest of manners, because Allah protected him from indulging in what other people were doing at that time. You see? Because, as you know, Allahumma salli ala rasulullah, in the pre-Islamic era, there were many practices that were not Islamic. They were not Islamic. And the Prophet ﷺ was selected by Allah to be a prophet, was nominated, was directed to be the prophet at the age of 40. So he lived with his people for 40 years to the extent that they gave him the name, the trustworthy, the honest. In a society where honesty and trustworthiness were not really practiced fully, by the people he was and during his early age of life and usually uh, when you were young you could make mistakes uh, I have a, a consultant a very well-known professor in medicine in our college and uh, another consultant he was 10 years younger than him applied to college to get work the college the department council agreed the college council agreed but this man said no I don't want him because I had experience that he was not really doing good job. He was not committed to his work as a physician. So we had to get them set together. He said, Dr. Ali, yes, 10 years ago when I was 30, I used to do these things. Now I'm 40. So that was done 10 years ago. I have changed a lot. But this usually happened to all of us. Muhammad وسلم, didn't pass by that period. No, Allah protected him. Allah, because Allah was preparing him for the greatest work ever to be taken by a human being, which is prophethood. So, we'll see how Prophet Muhammad وسلم, did in practice create a new concept of how a Muslim should be. Uh, there's something, there are some terms that we use. You may stop me if you think that we need to clarify them. Because even the term Muslim is misunderstood. Uh, in, in Africa, when you say you're Muslim, that means you're Hausa. If you're not a Hausa. In South Asia, when you say you're a Muslim, that means you're Malay, which is not true. There are many groups. And in many places in the world, when you say you're Muslim, you think you're Arab. And there are many millions of Arabs who are not Muslims. And the vast majority of Muslims are not Arabs. Arabs only make from about 20% of all Muslims. So even some of the terms that we really use, we need to clarify them every then and while. So the Prophet ﷺ lived in that environment. And he was best owed with four daughters from the beginning. Okay. And in that society, women were not respected. Actually, children, female children were buried alive. They killed them. They call it infanticide. Okay? 
Uh, anyway, infanticide is practiced today. Millions of newborn female babies are killed at their birth or just before their birth. Thanks to ultrasound technology. I'm not talking about miscarriages. I'm not talking about uh, abortion. abortion. No, I'm talking about selected killing of children. There is a lot. If you go infanticide and search the internet, you'll be astonished of how many millions of girls, infant, baby, female babies. So that is practice today. They need Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam to teach them. Okay, at a time when we have slogans of human rights, many organizations taken all over the world and talk about human rights, women rights, children rights, all these things. But they couldn't do anything because they didn't have the teaching of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. So Muhammad had his daughters and he lived with them in the best way. He loved them so much and they loved him so much. I'll just uh, move a bit step in how Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu used to approach people. Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam or Prophet used to be very well known for his smile. That one of his companions said, ما رأينا رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم إلا متبسما. He was smiling all times. At a time when the Arabs would think of charisma, cavalry, that you don't smile, you frown all the time. You show, you show to be strong. But the Prophet Sallallahu was the strongest, was the most courageous. But his smile did not leave him. To the extent that many people would ask him, whom do you love the most? Whom do you love the most? This man who asked him was Amr ibn al-As radiallahu anhu. Because every time he would come to the Prophet he was smiling to him. He said, oh, I must be the most beloved person to Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu So he welcomed me with. Whenever you meet the king every time and he smiles at your face, you think you are. I <laughs> see. <laughs> Even your boss, when every time you come to your boss and he's smiling to you, you think, oh, I'm very close to him. He likes me the most. He likes me the most. So Amr ibn al-As took that step. He said, whom do you love the most, O Prophet of Allah? And here is the point. He said, Aisha. His wife. At that time, people bury daughters, women alive. The Arabs even don't want to tell you the name of their wives. You know this? The Arabs are very jealous. They don't. This is why they kill their own daughters, because of jealousy, extreme jealousy. And the Prophet would say, whom do you love the most? He said, Aisha. In a very simple one, his wife. The man was really, uh, Amr ibn Asr radiallahu anhu, yani he, he was shocked and he just wanted to change the situation. He said, how about men? He thought he would say him. He said, Abuha, her father. So he, he said, I didn't ask him again. <laughs> because every time he will bring me somebody else. This reveals the real teaching of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu that he's changing the mentality of people. How they view themselves, how they view their family members, how they view others. So he's given him a real lesson. This is a real workshop in whom to love and how to love and how to express your love without being ashamed of this pure, great love. So the smile of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was there all the time with his enemies, with his friends, with his close ones, with everybody. Now we train people how to smile, you know this? They pay a lot of money, especially sales persons. They teach them how to smile. Okay, they, they tell you just smile, uh, just smile. People cannot smile sometimes, okay? Uh, this is one aspect of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We'll, we'll go and, and see how Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was doing public relations with others, with others, that people may think, quote unquote, his enemies, although he never thought of them as his enemies. You know, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu had a neighbor who lived next to him for a long time. He was a Jewish neighbor. And you know, this is, a, we cannot talk about the details of Sirah, the biography, the life of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, how he, when he arrived to Medina, and the Medina was a metropolitan area, multi-religious, multi-racial, multilingual, 
and in the first time in history where there was a constitution written that accommodates all those people, they would live as citizens in one state with full rights as well as commitments and obligations. So he came to that environment and he was ready to accept it. And Islam is the only religion that could tolerate all existing denominations and treat them with justice. We have evidence not only from the Quran and the life of Prophet Muhammad وسلم, and the history of Islam, but even from the practices of other nations. So when we might need to go to that one time and just talk about this specific issue, inshallah, in our uh, talks. So this neighbor was Jewish. And people think that Muslims are enemies to the Jews, and Jew, which is, we don't have enmity towards anybody for their own personality, you see? No way. So because a Muslim could marry a Jewish woman, could marry a Christian woman, and his, the, uh, the father, his father-in-law and his brothers-in-law, whatever, will be, call, his children will be called them grandpa, grandma, and they're Jewish, whatever, you see? And uh, I talked with you about the, the family of Maryam in the States when I'll go back to Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, but I just want you to know how this could be practiced now. I have a brother from Tunisia, his name is Al-Habib, and he got married to an American woman, and she got the name, she, her name was Mary. You know Mary? Mary. Maryam Salam. Okay, she said I'd like to be called Maryam because this is the real name of Mary, Maryam. Okay, in Arabic and in Hebrew, Maryam. So she changed the name and she became Muslim. As she got married, he said, don't you have a family? She said, yes, but I haven't seen my parents for a long time. He said, how come? Now you're a Muslim. You are committed to your parents. You should really serve them. You should help them. You should support them. You should be with them. They will be the grandparents of our children. How can you? And he really communicated. They were in Pennsylvania. We were in Michigan. So during the Eid time, they came. He said, come to celebrate the Eid with us. And he invited them to his house. He gave them accommodation. He took care of them. Nobody would do that. Anyway, uh, so they, they enjoyed life with them. They said to him, Habib, we have many children. We don't see them. One or two of them will send us a card on Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day, Mother. Father, happy Father's Day, Mother. That's it. Those people who care for our children. Why would you call us? He said, no. In Islam, you are just like my parents, even if you are stay as non-Muslims. I should take care of you. I should respect you. Who taught us this? Who? Who's going to do this? Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So the Prophet was having this Jewish neighbor. And this Jewish neighbor was disagreeing with Prophet Muhammad sallallahu Sometimes he doesn't like him. He would throw things in front of his house. For a few days, nothing was thrown there. The Prophet ﷺ was surprised. He said, how could... And he never complained. If this incident didn't take place, we wouldn't know about it. So, because the Prophet didn't tell anybody, that said, my neighbor is throwing things in front of my door. No. So, he asked about his neighbor, and this is an Islamic practice, that you care about your neighbors. neighbors. So, they told him, one of the children of this neighbor is ill. He said, oh, another public relations issue, which is you need to visit your neighbor. neighbor. Now many people would stay in hospital for a long time. Nobody would, nobody would visit them. Sometimes they die, nobody would know about them. Oh. No, I know this in many places in the world, but not in the Muslim world. Not people who follow the teaching of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. This is impossible. You are respected, your rights are preserved as young, as adult, and as a man or a woman as when you go to get to your old age. This is your right by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and practiced by Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa So he went to this neighbor and the neighbor was really astonished. How, why is he coming to me? Said, I, he didn't say, oh, I didn't see the garbage in front of my house, so I'm visiting. Say, no, I heard that your son 
was sick and I'm here to visit you. I said, thank you. Imagine the situation. Anyway, this is a really long story. I'm just looking at certain aspects of the life of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Another occasion that took place is the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and his state was very poor. They didn't have uh, the World Bank. They didn't have uh, uh, Saudi monetary. They didn't have all this. So he had to run his own state. He had many poor people and he was the head of state. He used to borrow money from others and the people at that time who were having money and the people who have money there are the Jews. He had a, a Jew and he got money from him, said, to support my state and give it back to you. So this Jewish man came to him before the due date for paying the debt. And he held the Prophet ﷺ with his claw, said, why don't you pay your debt? Umar was there, he got very angry. And he was about to attack this man. He said, no, 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 don't do that, please. And the man was frightened. Umar doesn't make play jokes. You know, he's a very serious man. And uh, touching the Prophet ﷺ and dealing with him in such a way is not humiliating the Prophet, you humiliate the whole Muslim community. And you cannot do that to anybody, not to mention the Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. This is, uh, I'll pause for a while. You know the man in, in Denmark who used to do the caricatures of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that created fairy in the whole Muslim world? That man became a Muslim. Naam. And he visited the masjid of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And he visited the grave of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And he cried in front of him and said, please forgive me. I did that because I didn't know you. I did that because I didn't know you. If I had known you, I wouldn't have done that. Please forgive me. Please. Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is forgiving people even in his own grief. Alayhi salatu was so when this man came to him, he said, Umar, go and pay him from Baytul Mal, from the Muslim treasury. Go and pay him. This man got his, he said, this is your debt? He said, yes. And he gave him extra. He said, why are you give me extra? Listen, how Prophet Muhammad وسلم, is, Allah spoke about him, the best of manners. He said, this is your debt that you gave to Prophet Muhammad وسلم, and this is the Prophet instructed me to give it to you because I frightened you. This is to compensate for what I frightened you for. Subhanallah. You, have, you don't have to frighten people, even if they mistreat you. This is the character of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And these are just some of the aspects. If you continue for like 10 or 20 days about this issue, maybe next time, inshallah, we'll talk about, we will not finish. Because this man was nominated, he was selected by Allah to be the role model for all humanity. May Allah guide me and you to follow the path of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.